Okay, so once we've gotten your rail on, the next step is to get the carriages on. So uh, please refer to the video for assembling and adjusting your carriages. Once you get your carriages adjusted, you need to slide them back onto the extrusion. Please note that the set screws for the, uh, the, the side where the set screws are on the carriages should be facing down towards the extrusion. So uh, it's very important to get these adjusted beforehand. And so just uh, slide them on the, uh, slide them on your rail here and make sure that the, uh, make sure that the play is still right if you've uh, pre-adjusted them. After you got your two uh, after you got your two carriages situated on the rail, the next step in this process is to install the lead screw. So the, installing the lead screw is a two-step process. The first thing we're going to do is take the low-profile bearing block, and we're going to need two one and a quarter inch carriage bolts and two five sixteenth inch lock nuts. And we're going to put the, uh, the one and a quarter inch carriage bolts through the bottom. And then the lock nuts are going to rest in these uh, square slot cutouts on the low profile bearing block. Again, we're just going to uh, you uh, just tighten until they're a little less than finger tight. Next, you're going to want to loosely slide the low profile bearing block onto the extrusion. So it doesn't have to sit right up against the, uh, uh, the rail. Uh, we're going to leave it a little off for now. Next, we're going to want to take the, uh, the Acme lead screw and we're going to want to take the five start nut. The nut gets threaded onto the lead screw. Uh, both ends of the lead screw have been deburred, so the, uh, the nut should go on easily. If it doesn't go on easily, don't force it. Um, you may have better luck on one end than the other. But uh, you want to get the nut on. Uh, it is going to be a tight fit, but it shouldn't be too hard to turn. Like you should be able to hold the rod in your hand and turn the nut. Next, we're going to take the Z-axis plate, and there are two screw. Uh, there are two threaded holes here in the bottom of the Z-axis plate, and we're going to install the nut into. Uh, we're going to install the nut on those holes. So what we're going to need is two 5 16 by 3 quarter inch screws and we're just going to install them um, install them there and tighten them down you're going to need a 3 8 inch allen wrench to tighten these down Now we're going to want to uh, turn the rod so the nut has a little bit of leeway on each side. The, there is the side with the slots here, these slots, and that, and this top side is going, you're going to want to face it towards the bearing block assembly here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this side and we're going to slip the lead screw into the shaft collar. And then after we do that, we're going to take the low profile bearing block assembly on this end and we're going to slip the lead screw 
into that. Now, when you slip the lead screw into this collar assembly here, uh, you notice how there's a line in the collar that uh, separates it in half. Don't make sure that you don't put the lead screw uh, past that line here, um, because it uh, uh, if you do that, then uh, it, it kind of messes up the uh, the uh, the holding power of the uh, on the drill rod. So we're just going to want to push it up towards, uh, uh, you know, right towards half uh, is about right. After you get these into place, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to tighten down the shaft coupler on the other side here. You're going to need a 964th inch Allen wrench. Now that you've got the lead screw attached to the shaft collar, before we can really tighten these two blocks down, we need to get the, uh, the Z-axis plate attached to these two linear carriages because these two linear carriages are going to basically straighten out the whole entire assembly for us automatically. So uh, what we need here are 3 8 inch by 1 1⁄2 inch socket head cap screws. We need four of them. And we are just going to um, uh, we're just going to put them here in these slots. Now the carriages, you're going to want to line up the carriages here so that the two tap holes are aligned with the slots. And then we're just going to push. Uh, then we're just going to put the screws down in here. After we do that, uh, you're going to want to take your Five sixteenth inch Allen wrench, so a big one, and we're going to want to just uh, start to work these screws down. If it's if the screws are tight, you may have to work them in diagonals. Um, I highly recommend Loctite for these nuts. The last part of the system that we have to do is tighten down the low profile bearing block and the regular bearing block and you're going to want to take a half inch wrench for that. Let's do the, uh, the big bearing block first. And again, uh, before you tighten it up, you want to make sure that there is a, about a sixteenth of an inch gap between the shaft coupler and the, uh, the, Z, uh, the Z axis rail. You don't want to touch it. Lastly, what we're going to do is tighten down the, uh, the low profile bearing. Now when you tighten this down, the threads on the nut won't engage uh, all the way. You won't, have enough, uh, you won't have enough screw to get all the threads, but don't worry about that. You shouldn't need too, uh, you shouldn't need too much, and it should grab about two thirds of the thread. Now, after we're done, uh, after we're done, what we're going to do is we're going to test the system. And the way that we test the system is um, we basically uh, try to, uh, you basically turn the screw by hand here. And so we're going to turn the screw by hand and you should be able to turn the screw by grasping the shaft collar here and turning it. Now I can't turn it. So that means that we've got some binding in the system. We are going to, um, the solution to the binding is to uh, uh, loosen everything back up here. And then we're going to loosen up the big bearing here just slightly. And now we're going to check to see that we can turn the we're going to check to see that we can turn the, uh, the unit. And so uh, now you can see I can easily turn the unit by hand here. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to retighten 
We'll retighten the uh, the small one first this time. And after we retighten each bearing block, we're going to recheck for binding. So, and it's really a uh, you know this part is really a trial and error part because all of the because the system is bolted together, it's really. Um, designed to, uh, you know, it's really um, kind of necessary to do these adjustments. So now that that part turned easily, I can turn that. And now if you look here, I can turn the system by hand um, easily and we're done.